Around the one-year anniversary of ChatGPT, OpenAI's competitors have created an alliance to make AI more open. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown. One of the big themes for the show over the last week or so, which is pretty inevitable and always going to happen, is where the industry is at the one-year anniversary of ChatGPT. Whether you like ChatGPT or loathe it or like OpenAI or dislike them, there's no denying that the launch of ChatGPT set off this wave of generative AI and will be seen as the starting point for this whole movement and industry that we're all a part of. Now, of course, the drama surrounding the OpenAI leadership has been the dominant theme. However, it's not the only one. Today, we are discussing a new alliance led by Meta and IBM, which is a fairly strong statement of disagreement with the way in which OpenAI and some of their peers are behaving as relates to the artificial intelligence industry. So let's talk about what the news is, and then we'll do a little bit of analysis and interpretation. The Wall Street Journal writes, Meta and IBM launch AI Alliance. One year after the debut of ChatGPT, companies including AMD and ServiceNow are teaming up with academia to promote open alternatives to open AI. So a couple things to note about this alliance. First of all, it is not just Meta and IBM. There are more than 50 AI companies and research institutes that are part of this alliance. As I mentioned, it is called, perhaps not all that creatively, and certainly with difficulty to Google, the AI Alliance. Other members include Intel, Oracle, Cornell University, and the National Science Foundation. The journal describes its members as, quote, largely supporting open source, an approach in which technology is shared free and draws on a history of collaboration among big tech, academics, and a fervent movement of independent programmers. And to be clear, this is absolutely a response to the way that the industry has developed and specifically the way that narratives around the industry have developed. Said Dario Gill, Senior Vice President at IBM and Director of IBM Research, Frankly, we've been a little bit unsatisfied with the overall debate and the discussions on AI over the last year. We did not feel that it reflected the diversity of the ecosystem that is making this AI moment possible. Said Meta's President of Global Affairs, Nick Clegg, we believe it's better when AI is developed openly. More people can access the benefits, build innovative products, and work on safety. Now, in addition to any sort of statement of principle, there is also a clear business objective here. Again, from the Wall Street Journal, many of the Alliance's members are companies that have their own AI products but are struggling to catch up with the rush of attention that OpenAI and its investment partner, Microsoft, are drawing. The article also points out that although they have been working on this alliance since all the way back in August, the timing is opportune. Quote, since the upheaval at OpenAI in late November, businesses want to have more providers of AI products to diminish the risk of working with a single vendor and are exploring other AI systems as viable alternatives. The timing of the AI Alliance's launch underscores that message, IBM's Gill said. This other way, it's a much more distributed approach, but much more resilient, because no given institution can derail the success of the open engine. It definitely feels a little bit like an alliance of companies who are just a little behind. For example, quote, Advanced Micro Devices, the chipmaker aiming to take a piece of NVIDIA's dominance in AI chips, said that it will support an open AI ecosystem with its hardware and that it, along with other Alliance members, will build the software that enables businesses to use the chips, said Forrest Narod, AMD's Executive Vice President and General Manager of its data center group. The company is set to spotlight AI accelerator chips this week that Narod says will be a strong alternative to NVIDIA's offerings. Said IBM Skill, if you think the future of AI is going to be determined by two, three, or five institutions, you're mistaken. I hope that it gives more clarity and confidence that the world of open innovation is a world to bet in. Now, interestingly, there is far more coverage given to those competitive dynamics of the alliance than there are to what they're actually doing. For example, the only real mention of what they're doing in that Wall Street Journal piece are the last couple sentences, which say, the alliance is focusing on six areas, including regulation and safety as near-term initiatives. Gill said it would soon release a benchmarking tool for AI safety and model validation. Now, what's really interesting about this to me is that on the one hand, it's totally easy to be cynical about, to see this as something that is forced largely by competitive pressures. Basically, the open AIs and anthropics of the world, along with their big tech partners, have sucked all the oxygen out of the room, dominating not only the media coverage, but by extension, the enterprise business. And this is a way to try to reclaim some of that narrative space. However, even if that's true, that's not to say that this message, that the future of AI is not going to be determined by two, three, or five institutions, isn't an important and resonant one. TechCrunch's coverage of the alliance gets at some of the skepticism. In fact, the title of their piece is Meta and IBM form an AI alliance, but to what end? Now, part of TechCrunch's questions come from the fact that there are already similar alliances to this in the space. They write, so what will the AI alliance do exactly and how will its work differ from the quite similar, at least in terms of its overarching mission members and tenets partnership on AI? 
The partnership on AI years ago promised to publish research using open source licenses and minutes from its meetings to, as the AI Alliance purportedly seeks to do, educate the public on pressing AI issues of the day. Well, confusingly, the partnership on AI is in fact a member of the AI Alliance. Giving a little bit more detail on the practicals, TechCrunch writes, the AI Alliance's members will first form working groups, a governing board, and a technical oversight committee dedicated to advancing areas like AI trust and validation metrics, hardware and infrastructure that supports AI training and open source AI models and frameworks. They'll also establish product standards and guidelines and then partner with important existing initiatives, initiatives conspicuously not named in the press release, from government, nonprofit, and civil society organizations who are, quote, doing valuable and aligned work in the AI space. If that sounds a lot like what the inaugural members of the Alliance were already doing independently, you're not wrong. But in the release, the AI Alliance stresses that its work, whatever form it ultimately takes, is intended to be complementary and additive rather than needlessly duplicative. The release reads, More collaboration and information sharing will help the community innovate faster and more inclusively and identify specific risks and mitigate those risks before putting a product into the world. That stands in contrast to a vision that aims to regulate AI innovation and value creation to a small number of companies with a closed proprietary vision for the AI industry. Now, in a section called Key Subtext, it gets into the fact that there is clearly a dividing line sort of battle happening here that is being calcified and hardened by this announcement. On the one hand, you have companies who are not included in this AI alliance, that include Google, OpenAI, Microsoft, Anthropic Cohere, who are skeptical, if not downright opposed, to the open source approach taken by a company like Meta. The piece points out that also notably absent are institutions like Stanford and MIT, and that NVIDIA isn't a member either. They write, I'll note that NVIDIA isn't a member of the AI Alliance either, a suspect absence given that the company is by far the dominant provider of AI chips and a maintainer of many open source models in its own right. Perhaps the chipmaker perceived a conflict of interest in collaborating with Intel and AMD, or perhaps it decided to cast its lot with Microsoft, Google, and the rest of the tech giants opting out of the Alliance for strategic reasons. Who can say? Now, the flip side is that they did note that the groups that have come together for the AI Alliance represent a very wide swath of companies. Others they name include CERN, Yale, Imperial College of London, Stability AI, Hugging Face, and more. TechCrunch writes, the AI Alliance's initial cohort is exceptionally broad, sitting at the intersection of not just AI and enterprise, but healthcare, silicon and software as a service as well. But they write, without the participation of so many major AI industry players and lacking deadlines or even concrete objectives, can the AI Alliance succeed? What would success even look like? Beats me. The vast number of competing interests from healthcare networks to insurance providers won't make it easy for the Alliance's members to coalesce around a single united front. And for all their talk of openness, IBM and Meta aren't exactly the poster children for the future that the Alliance's release depicts, casting doubt on their sincerity. Perhaps I'm wrong and the AI Alliance will be a smash success, or perhaps it'll crumble under mistrust in its own bureaucracy. We'll see. Time will tell. Now, overall, I just don't think it's all that complicated. There is a major dividing line in and around the artificial intelligence space, around people's attitudes towards open source and openness in general. To me, the AI alliance simply reads like a codification of those sides. But those sides aren't necessarily any different than they were yesterday before the AI alliance was announced. Now, is it opportunistic for certain of these members to have joined the AI alliance versus the uncodified alliance of big tech and closed AI people? Sure, maybe. And is it opportunistic, or at least opportune, to use the chaos of OpenAI in the last few weeks as a moment to try to convince particularly enterprise customers and policymakers that maybe a more decentralized approach that is more open and less reliant on a small handful of companies might be a better one for this critical infrastructure and new technology? Sure. But as the famous saying goes, all's fair in an AI arms race. I think it's reasonable to have the sort of skepticism that that TechCrunch author does, that such a broad-based coalition could actually find much to coalesce around. But even for those who are skeptical of open source AI, and who are nervous about what it might mean. Having a body where proposals for standards and guardrails and things like that can at least be discussed, in other words, where there is a space for ideas to flow between these different people who share this sort of sentiment, seems like a net good thing rather than a bad thing. So overall, I'm not sure. It could be that this ends up being a nothing burger, just a nice press release and a thing to discuss on podcasts for a day or two, or it could be something more. No matter what, I do think it reflects the fact that we are moving to a new stage of the conversation, one with real policy implications, where enterprises are making buying decisions. In other words, one where the stakes are higher than ever. Interesting stuff at the beginning of this week, and something to keep an eye on for sure. For now, however, that is going to do it for the AI Breakdown. I appreciate you listening or watching. Until next time, peace.